I was a horrible leader. When I started out, I was a good technical person. And when I started my first company, my second, my third company, I, they really relied on my technical, technical ability, my hard work and my drive. But the more staff we got, the bigger, the larger we got, my bad leadership was really exposed. And it became a problem. It became a massive, massive problem. It became a problem in my, in my business life, in my personal life, for my mental health, my emotional health. It was a massive problem. And I said, hey, I really, really have to change this. I looked at my business goals, my per personal goals, and it's like, look, they all have, all have to do with how good of a leader I am. And I worked really hard and I shifted. I transformed myself into a very, very effective leader. So much that my, my companies made the Inc. 5000 list, we were voted the best place to work, and I won Social Entrepreneur of the Year. And for me to make that transformation, th there's five shifts, there's five secrets that I learned. And actually, they told me that you guys are really, really smart. So I broke it down into three because we only got 15 minutes. I want to give you as much content as we can. So I want to teach you the, the three shifts that I had to learn to transform myself as a leader. And it's the same three shifts that I teach, like Karen said, SAP, Microsoft, Uber. And it's, the th it's the same three shifts that everybody that I've worked with, the tens of thousands of business owners I've worked with over the last bunch of years, learned to shift them into really, really effective leaders. Does that sound good? Would that be helpful if you got that out of here today? Good, I like you, because if you said no, I don't know what we talk about for the next 12 minutes, so it's good. Um, but I started out, I started out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it's by New York, it's in the Rust Belt of, of America, and I was a real, real geek. When I was about 13, year old, 13 years old, this is the, the, the early to mid 80s, my dad bought me an Apple II clone, I taught myself to code in my basement. When I was 16, 17, 18 years old, in, in, in high school age in the US, me and my buddies, instead of on a Friday or Saturday night going out, what we would do is we would get the newest video card or more RAM, upgrade our PCs and play the newest and coolest games. That was my social life around in high school. Needless to say, I wasn't having a lot of sex around then. So um, fast forward uh, uh, after I graduate university, my first job was as, as an IT technician. So I was the guy, I worked at this uh, uh, engineering software company when one of the people, they had a problem with their workstations, they couldn't print, they would call up to IT and they would send me down. And I would have to be the guy that, that crawled under their desk to see if all the, 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 the wires were connected right. And I'll tell you what, it's six foot eight or 2.03 meters, that wasn't a pretty sight, me under a desk. And I, I hated that job for a lot of reasons. But my cousin, he lived in California, and so we're talking on the phone right now and I tell him, man, I hate my job out here. He's like, Mike, if you hate your job, why not hate your job in California? Why don't you move your butt out to California and get a crappy job out here? At least we can enjoy, enjoy the sunshine. I'm like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of logic in that. So I packed up all my stuff. I moved to California. Got started in computer software in, in ERP, Microsoft Dynamics and, and SAP type things. And um, that started my career in, 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 in corporate. Worked my way up the corporate ladder. And then I came back to San Diego, uh, California, and I, I started my first business and then my second business and third business. And like I told you before, you know, I'm a good technical person. You know, I'm, I'm really analytical. I, I, I'll outwork any problem. I'll, I'll, I'll work as long as it needs to. I'm really, really focused. Um, and, you know, probably like a lot of you, it's like I, I put the, the company on my, on my technical ability and, and my will, and, and, it, and it did get it pretty far. But then cracks started appearing in the foundation. You know, we started to have problems with, with customers, problems with our culture. People started to quit that I never thought would quit. And then, and, and we were getting, because we had some success early, but then it seemed to all come crumbling down. And, and there's, a, there's a longer dramatic story that has to do with, with alcohol, drugs, assault, restraining orders, and lawsuit. You gotta, you gotta watch the Netflix special for that one. I won't go into it here. Um, but it's like, and, and I came to the point where I thought I was gonna lose everything. I thought I was gonna lose everything. And all that drama really put me into a depression. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am, am, am I even cut out to be a leader? Because at that time, you know, I, I, I had a bunch of staff, we had offices, we had all these things, but I had deep down within me, I thought I was a fraud because I was just trying to keep things going to the next day. I didn't know what I was doing. All of a sudden, I never ran a business before. All of a sudden, I have three, I have people, I have payroll, I have lawyers, I have accountants, I have line of credits, I have loans, I have this, I have that, things I never did before. It was a mad, the, the, the responsibility and the pressure was just crushing me. But I, I, I never could ever let anybody know that. It's like I was putting on this, this face to everybody else, but internally there was just chaos. And my biggest fear was that somebody was gonna find out and that it would all come crashing down. 
I'll tell you the weirdest thing. Every time my phone would ring in, in a millisecond, what I would think is, oh my God, it's going to be a, a customer canceling their contract. The employees are going to hear about it. They're going to quit. My company's going to go under and I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to be homeless. This, this nanosecond, this happened, it, and, I'm like, and I would just shake it off. But that, that actually would, would happen to me. And then I'm like, look, Mike, I got to change something here. So um, I, did a lot of, I did a lot of training. I went to the, 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 the best teachers and trainers for leaderships in the world. And I also did something else interesting. I ended up earning a master's degree in spiritual psychology. And we say spiritual psychology, it has nothing to do with religion, but it's the psychology of love and compassion. Now, I want to give everybody here a, a little taste of what spiritual psychology is. So for the next 10 minutes, we're going to do meditating and hugging. No, I'm just joking. It's funny, it's funny when I do that in Germany, they all forget, nine, nine hugging, nine hugging. So it, uh, it's good. But, you know, it, it, is, it is psychology, but it's a loving, compassionate focus. And when I started applying them to my businesses, my, my, my personal life, my personal life transformed. But when I started applying it to my businesses, my businesses started to flourish. Because I, I was making connections with my employees. I was really getting to know them. I, put, I created a great culture. We created these amazing relationships with our customers. We were giving back to the community. And like I told you earlier, you know, we won some awards. You know, the Inc. 5000 list, best place to work, etc. But that was on the outside. But on the inside, I was finally having fun. Because I think all of us get into business because we, we don't want to do good. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I like making money. Money's fun, and I'm a competitor. And I want to create something special. I want to create something, again, for my employees, my customers. My, that's really important to me. And it's like I found it. I found that system. And then what happened is some of my friends in San Diego that own businesses said, hey, Mike, you know, what are you doing over there? Something, you, you, you're doing something right. So I started coaching and teaching and training them. And um, after 18 years in accounting software, now I, th I know you, you hear accounting software, you think that's the sexiest thing anybody ever, ever talked about. But after 18 years in accounting software, I figured I'm going to do something else because uh, I love those days. But now what I do is I teach other people how to, to, to do the same type of, of empowering um, leadership. And so that's, I'm just going to share a couple, share three big points. So hopefully that will make your leadership journey a little better. So the first point I want to share is you have to, to commit to transformation, commit to transformation. And now what I mean by that is I'm going to take the assumption is everybody in here is a smart person. You're a really good technical person. You're great at sales. You really understand marketing. Maybe it's social media. Uh, you know, so I was talking to this guy today. He was an investment banker. You are a smart person. You probably view, view yourself as this great coder that happens to lead a team. Well, that might be what you look at yourself now as, but you have to transform. You have to change how you view yourself. You have to change to being a leader that happens to be a smart person. Quit acting like you're not a leader. That is your job. Your job is to be strategic. Your job is to lead this team. But for some reason, we have this aversion to calling ourselves a leader, to stepping fully into that. It's like, we're not sure if we can take this leadership role, so I'm gonna play off of this salesperson, play off of this coder, play off of this marketing person. BS, if you wanna get to where you have to go, you have to, to tell yourself you're a leader and to start taking that as your new profession. Because when, you know, when, I was a, when, I, when I looked at myself as a technical person, here's what I was good at. I was very analytical. I was very hardworking. I would outwork the problem, right? I was very good at risk avoidance. I could work you know, off a task list real well. Now, when you own a company, all that's thrown out the window. 20% of that's important. Now you have to communicate. You have to have emotional intelligence. Instead of risk avoiding, you have to manage risk. You know what? You've got to take risks. That's what your job is. You just got to figure out how to take them. And all those things, and you have to go from being tactical from be, to being strategic, from looking at the, you know, the, what's right in front of you to how does this work with, with my investments from one year, from five years out. And I'll tell you, all those are learned skills. When they talked about are leaders born or are they lead, they're made, they're absolutely made. I'm a living example of it. Everybody I work with, all my friends, we're all live, I've seen everybody evolve as leaders. So start taking your leadership seriously. The second thing is great leadership is born out of great confidence. Great leadership is born out of great confidence. Because think about the, the leaders that you really admire and you respect. They have a confidence about them. 
they have a confidence about them. Everybody talks about vulnerability, and vulnerability is important. And we could talk more about vulnerability, but you don't, you're not vulnerable until you're confident in yourself. I can't share something deep with you until I have that inner relationship with myself that I'm confident. And so what I do work a lot, because I teach, what I tell people is, there's a lot of leadership stuff out there, but it's actually management. What leadership is, is when you walk into a room, you want people to say, wow, that guy or that lady, they're the leader. You know, it's just the presence that you walk in with. And, 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 and we, we got to be careful because on one hand, there's shyness, right? And on the other hand, there's arrogance. But in the middle here is confidence. And confidence is all, often quietness, but it's a powerful quietness. But for me, before I learned all these things, I, I would hang out in shyness, and then I would be a bit of a jerky, arrogant dude, and then I would pop back to shyness. But neither of those are where we want to be. We want to be that confident person. And that doesn't mean I have to know everything, but I have to have confidence that we're going to get there. And that's how delegation occurs. That's how empowerment occurs. Because bad leadership comes from insecurity, right? Bad leadership comes from lack of transparency. Bad leadership comes from micromanagement. That's all control. That's all ego-based stuff. So that's why we want to move you into confidence. So the third thing is you have to find a mentor. You have to find a coach. You have to find people that will take you there. And I know you're like, hey, the guy on the, the coach on the stage is saying you have to find a coach. Yes, you know what I'm saying? You have to find a coach, whether it's me or anybody else. You have to find somebody that's going to take you through here because I didn't start really truly making massive strides until I got mentors, until I got coaches. I have three coaches right now. I have three mentors right now. So that's going to be your fastest way there. Um, everybody knows, obviously, who Apple is. If you don't know what the company Apple is, you have to leave. We, we don't allow you in here. Okay. And, uh, but if you don't know, Steve Jobs built Apple. He started Apple with Steve Wozniak when he was 22 years old. They went public at 25 years old. When he was 25 years old, he took Apple public. It was one of the largest IPOs in history. It was one of the largest companies. It, 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 you know, he's in his late, mid to late 20s. He was kicked out at 30 years old because he, although he was brilliant, he was a horrible leader. And then he went out, he got some coaching, got some mentoring, he got some wisdom, and then he came back and then he, he, he re revitalized um, Apple. And so that's what you need to do. You have to commit to transformation. You have to commit to changing yourself into start, quit, quit being this smart person, start being this leader person. Second thing is you have to work on your self-esteem. You have to work on your confidence because when you work on that, that's the type of people investors invest in. That's the type of people that are going to join your company and be loyal to you through thick and thin. They're going to turn down offers for more money or a better title because they believe in you. They believe in your vision. They believe in your purpose. And the third thing is you have to find mentorship. That's why it's good that you're here because you're surrounding yourself by people that are doing the same thing you are. And, and that community, that support is amazing because what you're doing now is you're probably putting yourself through more risk and more stress than you ever have in your life or you ever will in your life. And by, to have people to go to places like this, you need that support. 